Hello, welcome back to Star Trek Resurgence, my second part playing this game now. Last night I quite enjoyed it, it was uh, fun. Like I said, last night too, it's not an action paced game, it's more narrative driven. If you're a fan of action games, you won't like this. If you're a fan of games from Telltale though, like the Batman games and uh, The Walking Dead, you might enjoy it, but I think to really enjoy this game, you have to be a Star Trek fan. And understand Star Trek lore, at least from Next Generation. Not so much for Discovery or... Um, Captain Kirk era, or the new movies that came out a few years ago. <laughs> but yep, yeah, let's get back to the game. I think the game's going to be frozen. What? Have to get back there. <laughs> ah, there we go. Just me being dumb. Now, I'm talking to people here, I think. Said last night. I talked to this guy. Nope. These guys. Yes. Sidron. Sidron. Commander, I'm glad you've chosen to side with the Hotari. I knew the Federation would see through the Elidians' baseless claims and protect the interests of my people. To be clear, I'm not on either side of this conflict. Our only interest is peace. I will keep that in mind. I assume you were there the day the mines were seized from the Elidians. Not seized. Reclaimed. And restored to their rightful owners. Yes, I was there. We had to be decisive. Before the Elidians could even realize their worst nightmares upon them. Did you have help from someone else? Otari stands alone against the Elidian forces. We don't need help from anyone. They respect one thing above all else, and that is force. The greater the force, the more certain the outcome. Any talk of making peace is just that, and worth little without the strength to secure it. Which makes me wonder about your ship, the Resolute. Undoubtedly the Federation's finest warship. Ready to contend with anything the best might have in store. Or is that not true? Maybe I've misjudged it. It wasn't designed as a warship. More for scientific research and exploration. But the Federation must have ships designed for war. Technically, there are Starfleet ships representing the Federation. But yes. I see. Sidron. A pleasure Sidron. meeting you, Commander. Name. I'm sure we'll cross paths again. <clears throat> Soothing. Right, who can I can talk to next? Probably those guys over there, but we'll see what these ones are ready to say. They do. Commander Rydeck, I'm encouraged to see the Federation supporting my people. I'm afraid of what might happen without your help. If anyone deserves thanks, it's Ambassador Spock. No one is more invested in negotiating a peaceful settlement to this conflict than he Spock. is. Spock! I'm so glad. We need his help before the situation gets <coughs> further than it already has. It's been very trying. I saw you speaking with Sidron, our national hero. I'm curious, what did he say? He seems to be of the opinion that negotiating for peace is a waste of time. Because force is the only blunt instrument he understands. He's a miner, not a diplomat. For the first time in our history, the Hotari have the upper hand. We see ourselves as strong instead of downtrodden. New voices have risen up. 
All the voices shouted down. Calvin and Sidron have become national heroes. Now they have the Queen's ear. Better or worse, depending on your perspective. I take it they're against a negotiated peace with the Illidians. Heroes tend to want more of what made them heroic. If it were up to them, they'd wage all-out war and bring ruin upon us all. My fear has been that the Illidians will launch an attack and crush us. You've seen their starship, no doubt. They could have retaken the mines whenever they wanted to, but it never happened. And as strange as this may sound, I'd almost say they're afraid. I just don't know what they're afraid of. It's still the same bluster and bravado you would expect from them. That it has no teeth. That they're afraid of what might happen. Do you think it has something to do with the Ion Storm? Right now, it's stronger than ever, isn't it? It's entirely possible. I'm not a scientist, but I do know the storm has knocked out all kinds of systems. So maybe the Lydians weren't willing to risk their ships, given all the interference. Since the day of the revolt, Galvin has seized control of the mines and restricted all access. No one's allowed without his personal authorization. And they've taken over a section of the palace with just as much secrecy and security. I'm told it could be something they brought back from the mines. I've made inquiries, but everyone pretends it doesn't exist. I strongly suspect they're hiding something. What do you think it is? I've heard rumors it's some sort of ancient artifact, but I haven't seen it myself. How can we know? I'd better see what's happening. Do you think you can find out what they're hiding? I need to see proof of something before I can make my case to the Federation. I can try, but even if I found it, I might not know what to make of it. Take this. <coughs> you can use it to capture whatever you find, and then send it to me. Thank you. I will let you know what I find. And I look forward to our meeting again. Sorry, I couldn't help but notice you were speaking with the Hotari this whole time. I figured in the interest of fairness, I should offer another perspective. Oh, I'll take you. I'm probably not telling you anything you don't already know, but these negotiations rely on the Federation's neutrality, as does any hope you might have for a supply of Dilithium in the future. So, why you would choose to side with the Hotari escapes me. Without a Lydian involvement, there is no dilithium trade. We are and will remain completely neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution to this conflict. As is ours. Of course, the question is, at what price? A major solid Arminta, special attaché of Lydian armed forces. Pleasure to meet you, Commander. I have my issues with the Hotari, but I have to give them some credit. They know how to seize an opportunity. Inciting an uprising the same day as a massive once-in-a-lifetime ion storm. Our assumption was that this storm was just an anomaly. Yes, a very convenient anomaly. At least, that was what we were told. Of course, I wasn't there. But, who am I to say otherwise? Something tells me there's more to the story. So what really happened? Well, the official story is that it was the storm that enabled the revolt. How else do a bunch of unarmed, unorganized miners seize control of an entire moon, much less thousands of mines? But I've talked to people who were there. They tell a different story. They say they're lucky to have escaped with their lives. That it was more than just the storm. That somehow, the miners were able to harness the energy from the storm. I know it sounds crazy. I'm not even sure I believe it myself. But that's what they said. 
You just answered your own question. How do a group of miners do something that in theory can't be done? That's how. Harnessing the storm. But, even if it's true, how does that even happen? You tell me. If you'll excuse me, Commander Ryder. Oh, did I, did I come? Oh, yeah, there's a water thing. The point of is the Captain Salado. Let's see if these guys are at top first. Nope. They seem proud of their culture. Pride can lead to rash action. Can I don't know that now. No. Did the game turn me around? I'm assuming it's back this way. Yes, I assumed correctly. Well, that was a disaster. What happened? The Hotari refused to concede anything, so the Elidians stormed out. The Hotari did not invite us here as peacekeepers. I hope your efforts were more fruitful than ours. Gravitational harmonics failing to resolve. Warp bubble stability degrading. Increase output to maximum. Increasing warp output to maximum. It's happening again. It is evident that presently, the Resolute cannot achieve warp propulsion. Since our diagnostics rule out any problems with our warp systems or anything about the ship, the problem appears to be the fabric of space itself. Space itself? You're saying something about this region of space prevents warp travel? Prevents it, or can't sustain it. However improbable, that appears to be the case. The storm didn't stop us from leaving space dock and traveling here. But could it still be causing this interference with warp travel? We must follow sound investigatory principles. Do not let an assumed conclusion drive your analysis. Sometimes we need a little inspired thinking, Mr. Chobach. Captain Solano is on his way back from the negotiations, and I want to have some answers for him when he gets here. Indeed. Given the facts at hand, we may be able to deploy subspace probes around the ship to construct a clear picture of the phenomenon. Around the ship. I'll prep a shuttle. setting up a waypoint at a distance roughly corresponding to the edge of our warp field. When we get there, I'll deploy the first probe. Use W to fly forward, T to fly backwards, mouse to turn, Q to ascend, E to descend. This is pretty cool. Commander Westbrook, the Resolute systems are calibrated to receive the probe's readings. We are standing by to reproduce the warp field collapse after the first probe is deployed. Thank you, Mr. Chovak. We'll be in position shortly. And, Mr. Diaz, do take care in piloting the shuttlecraft. Now is not the time to indulge in the human penchant for joyriding. Chovak probably isn't such a fun guy to work for, huh? Ah, 
I just don't take it personally. At least I try not to. That's a very mature answer. Shows a positive attitude on your part. Remind me of it when I start complaining to you about the ship's new first officer. Far enough. Transporting the first probe into position. <laughs> Westbrook here. The first probe is deployed. Understood. We are reading it. We are about to replay the simulation. I can't get a handle on her. Commander Rydek. She rejected my plan to use a deflector pulse against the storm surge. But on the other, she did listen to my advice and use the whole polarity trick to get you through that excursion alive. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the new XO. I'm sure she's a fine officer, even if we don't see eye to eye. But she didn't go through what the rest of us did. You know that. And it's hard to figure out why she'd be the one Solano chose instead of... Well... One of us. I've heard some good things. You should at least give her a chance. I'll take that under advisement. Test is running. Warp field collapse in three, two, one, mark. What was that? <laughs> Whoa. All right, that is definitely a problem with the fabric of space. We need to get another probe out there. Two points of data, the Resolute and the Probe, we've managed to get an interference pattern. I'm setting a waypoint to a particularly strong area of interference. We'll deploy the second probe there. Listen, I'm gonna give you a piece of advice I wish someone had given me. Make sure you're never just one thing. And don't get so focused on what's in front of your face that you lose sight of the big picture. Before Rydex showed up, the captain pulled me into his ready room and told me he didn't think I had the people skills to be first officer. <laughs> what a load of crap. I mean, if he'd said that about Cholok, sure. Is that why you're being so friendly to me? Politics? That would be clever, but I think you give me more credit than the captain does. You're all right, Diaz. And you've got potential. You're a capable engineer. You're good in the field. Keep up the good work, and who knows? A solid jack of all departments like you could be commander in chief of Starfleet one day. Hell, Admiral Jellico started as a shuttle pilot. And there are places to go in the enlisted ranks, too. I don't know. I'm pretty happy where I am. You must be a glutton for punishment. Lieutenant Commander Chobok has been known to take decades to warm up to people. Also, my new friend. Here, this is <coughs> stop the engines. Deploying the probe. Westbrook to Commander Chovak, we're ready for another sampling of data. Very good. Running the simulation again. Warp field collapse in three, two, one. Mark. There it is again. I saw it. It seems to be directional. Well, what about the scans? Anything? Here's the readings in relation to our local space. We've got the Resolute, Otari Prime, and the probes. All this interference is overloading the sensor buffers. We're gonna have to triangulate the sensors manually. Okay. We got something. These 
These markers indicate peaks in the gravimetric interference patterns. Let's see if I can find some more. Hold up. This is coming from the moon. A beam that blocks warp travel. Aimed right at us. Someone is doing this intentionally. I don't know how they're doing it. This is like nothing I've ever seen. Why would they be doing this? We came here to help these people. And now we're getting hit by some warp-killing weapon? Now, look here. It's the current readings of the ion storm. These concentrations... They line up with the interference pattern. The storm and this beam. They're coming from the same place. Carter, whatever petty local conflict brought us here... It's just a small part of something much bigger. Presently, we don't have an explanation for how they're doing this. One thing is clear. This is no fluke. Thank you, Mr. Westbrook. I want a full briefing when I'm back on board. Solano out. A targeted weapon that inhibits warp travel. Coming from the Moon Tau. That would explain the difficulties my shuttle encountered. More importantly, the tenor of the Hotari during the negotiations. And here I thought the Elidians would be the problem. Coming to peace talks in a warship. This wasn't supposed to be so complicated. For all their posturing, every indication is that the Elidians are afraid of the Hotari. They didn't bring their warship as a threat. They brought it because they're scared. From everything we witnessed, I would say that is highly likely. But what are they afraid of? Tylus, the Hotari representative, said she thought they found something in the mines. Galvin and Sidron brought it back to the palace, but they're keeping it under tight security. She's going to investigate it. I gave her my tricorder. I expect she'll contact us soon. You found an ally. Why would Tylus help us? Go behind her people's back? It's a fair question, considering. She doesn't like the way Galvin and Sidron have been manipulating the situation. And the Queen. Working with us to go around them isn't the same as betraying her people. Hmm. That may be true. She's certainly more likely to help than the other Hotari we've met. That raises another question. Specifically, what do the other Hotari have to gain in bringing us here, only to make this hostile maneuver against us? There must be some motivation. Unless they change their minds between when they asked and when we got here. Given their indifference to the negotiations, and what we now know about this warp-disrupting weapon, it's almost as if they want to start a war. And Sidron was convinced the only thing the Illidians respect is force. I would say he's right about that. But at least they know when to hold back. But that does not explain why they would turn their aggressions against us. I don't think the Illidians know what's really down on that moon either. Major Armentis said the revolt defied explanation. That the Hotari miners somehow harnessed the energy of the storm. Harness the energy of the storm? Doing that is beyond even our capabilities. So is a weapon that disrupts warp travel. There have been civilizations and entities <coughs> more technologically advanced than the Federation. The Elidians and Hotari don't fall into that category. But that is all the more reason to investigate further. Commander Rydek, sorry to interrupt. We've received an urgent call from Atari. Queen's advisor, Tylus, is asked to speak with you. Put her through. Galvin and Citron are still with the Queen. I've enlisted help to gain access to the room they have under guard. I don't have much time. I'm not supposed to leave my post. It's only for a moment. I so appreciate your help. I found something. I'm sending you a scan.
got it. Tylus, if we needed to gain access to the mines on Tau, is that something you could help us with? I suppose it wouldn't be easy, but... I have to go. Tylus! Can we reconnect? Sorry, Captain. We've lost all contact. We can only hope she escaped without harm. It was hard to tell. We have to help her. Send another shuttle. We're not maybe... doing anything yet. Not until we know more. Let's see the scan of whatever the hell that was. Tyla suspects this came from the mines on town. It appears to be of ancient origin, but the markings are unfamiliar. We can run a full analysis when we get back to the residue. But if this came from the mines, then it might be the key to how they got the upper hand against the Lydians. Then we have to go into the mines. The Federation would not allow that. We were, after all, sent here to be a neutral party in a peace negotiation. However, we could demonstrate that the Hotari have acted in bad faith, which would enable us to investigate the mines on Tau with full justification. But of course, we would need conclusive proof before taking action. Whatever this artifact is may be proof enough, at least to satisfy the Federation. Especially if we can show the Hotari are controlling the warp disruption and targeting the Resolute. We may have a better understanding once we analyze the device. But a mission to the mines, covert or otherwise, is not out of the question. And I will handle the Federation. As I was telling Carter, I want all the data I can get on this warp problem. And the negotiating team shuttle has been recording data all the way back from Hotari. Even better than our probes. So pull the sensor and engine ISOs from the Melville when it sets down. We'll do. I'll join you and Chovak down in engineering to run another analysis after the briefing. I didn't like this warp problem when we thought it was some astronomical anomaly. And I like it a hell of a lot less now that we know someone is doing it to us. How does it work? What do we even do about it? What do you say we pull these chips and find out? Took some damage on the way. That ionic interference scored the hull plating. Might be some micro welds. Let's try pulling together. All right. Three, two, one. It won't budge. Gotta be the storm damage. We need to... Welcome back. Any excitement down on the surface? Excitement? No. Nothing like that. Hey, can you hand me the EJ-7 interlock? From the toolbox. I don't know what that is. Not much use for one on a security detail, huh? Carter? Yeah, I'll get it. I'll apply pressure while you decouple the panel. Here, I'll help. We've got this. Thanks for the hand. We have to get these isolinear chips down to engineering. No problem. You really know everything about these ships, don't you? The tools, 
the systems. Like a walking Starfleet technical manual. Well, what can I say? I'm good at what I do. <laughs> I can see that. Oh. Come on, start pulling chips. substance is a quantized spin crystallization of hydrogen, carbon, and lithium. It's emitting tetrametric pulses at an interval of 3.8422 seconds. Quantized crystallization isn't natural. I mean, it's only theoretical as a means to engineer matter on a subatomic level. What's it doing in there? Should you touch something with your hands? Sorry. <laughs> Regulation 364, subsection 9. What? Regulation 364, subsection 9, orders that in the case of an unknown foreign substance infiltrating a sealed system, it will be placed in secure confinement before further examination. Retrieve a containment module. Don't you think we're more equipped to deal with whatever this is? No. Before anything else, this is a security issue. You don't even know what this is. Which is why we need to study it. Once it's contained. Well, if it's not natural, then someone might have put it there. It could be a tracking device. Oh, or some no. kind of sabotage. Or even a bomb. Which is why we need to get it to the containment lab. Come on. I can't make an exception. Not even for you. I'm still going to report these crystals to Commander Westbrook when we send the shuttle data. And I will inform my superiors. I'm taking this just as seriously as you are. But I overheard talk about the warp disruption on the shuttle. <laughs> now these crystals? Maybe this situation is more than we can handle with just a science vessel. We could trigger a distress call, get Starfleet to send more ships. Or I could send a message to my old CO on the Adirondack. Get some combat-tested vessels. We're at the edge of the quadrant. Help isn't just gonna pop over like we're in Sector 001. Wouldn't hurt to try. You talk like you've never had your backs up against a wall before. This is Starfleet. We solve our own problems. Okay, stand back. Get this to the containment lab. We'll get it set up for you. I'll let you know when it's safely confined. Oh, we'll be there. Last thing you want is to study this down in main engineering and have it explode next to the warp core. She's got a point. Hmm. Almost forgot. Can't have that. <coughs> For a second, I thought she'd gone cold on you. So did I. Like she might have changed her mind. But I guess this whole situation has her spooked. Maybe she knows more than us. Or it's because this is all happening so fast. But she usually doesn't scare easy. Well, of course she's taking it seriously, but that's her job. If she's on duty, she's got to be on the lookout for danger. Yeah, but talking about sending a distress call on her own? That's going too far. She was probably just thinking out loud. I'm sure she'll come to her senses. This mission has enough complications stacking up. Now we'll get through it. You, me, and Miranda too. Commander Rydeck was able to work behind the scenes during the negotiations. He made contact with a representative from the Hotari delegation named Tylus. 
She mentioned an unusual artifact of unknown origin being held under tight security within the Hotari Palace, which she believes came from the mines on Tau. Now, this artifact might have a connection to the revolt, to the storm, and to the warp disruption we now know has been targeted at the Resolute. Commander Reidick, if you want to take it from here? Of course. Tylus managed to infiltrate the heavily guarded location within the palace and sent us these scans using my tricorder. It appears to be some sort of control panel, possibly connected to the warp disruption weapon originating on Tau. Of particular interest is this symbol, which we couldn't identify the origin of. The Federation database has records from a vast number of civilizations. If anyone from Starfleet has come across this before, the system should recognize it. Cross-referencing with Federation records. Displaying symbols from Federation database with a 90% probability of match or higher. Select a symbol to further analyze. All right, okay. Um, how do I... Cling on. That looks similar. Ninety-nine point two percent match. Got it. The Con Empire. So, what are we looking at? The design and composition indicate this is a glyph associated with the ancient Khan Empire. Their civilization collapsed over six hundred thousand years ago, but once spanned millions of systems with a population numbering in the trillions. Fascinating. The Takan were once the most advanced, most powerful civilization in the galaxy. Is it possible the Hotari found Takan technology? I wonder if they even know what they have. Our knowledge of the Takan is limited. I have only encountered passing references to them. We don't have the first idea what this is or what it means. And we have all of the Federation records available to us. Perhaps we should see what else the Federation records show. Computer, what is the last recorded discovery of other Takan artifacts? On Stardate 41386.4, the USS Enterprise D under the command of Captain Jean-Luc Picard discovered a Takan outpost in the Delphi Ardu system. According to the mission summary, an unbreakable energy draining field was deployed against the Enterprise and a Ferengi ship. The Enterprise was oh, unable so. to escape after negotiating the release of the DNS Portal 6-3, Guardian of the Takan Empire. Unbreakable energy draining field. It starts to make sense. What else is there? There's a lot here. Let's take it piece by piece. Select the aspect you wish to learn more about. The technology to capture and hold the Federation flagship would have to be unbelievably powerful. Computer, what else can you tell us about the energy draining field the Takan used? The Enterprise D was unable to break free on its own. The precise nature of the technology was never fully understood. Only that the crystalline technology used was beyond the comprehension of then current Starfleet science. The engineering team found a quantized spin crystal formation in the shuttle you took to Hotari. They registered tetrametric radiation coming from it. We have Takan technology on board right now? We might. I'll run a full analysis in the containment lab. There appears to be some sort of restriction order from Starfleet. Computer, explain this restriction. A Starfleet directive similar to General Order 7 forbids entering the Delphi Ardu system or attempting to make contact with Portal 63. Starfleet doesn't throw up a no trespassing sign for just anybody. I suppose it makes sense, considering what happened to the Enterprise D. The screen guy first. Someone from the Takan Empire is actually still around. Or at least was, 16 years ago. Computer, what other information do you have on Portal 63, Guardian of the Takan Empire? The entity known as Portal 63 is of an unknown nature. 
A biped humanoid, he was unaware that the Takan Empire no longer existed at the time of the encounter. He was able to control the crystal-based technology of the Takan outpost through apparent telepathic means. It was by his choice that the Enterprise was released from the energy draining field after Commander William T. Riker of the Away Team argued on behalf of both Starfleet and the Ferengi. Telepathic control of their technology. As I have said, they were the most advanced civilization in the galaxy. What sort of planet is Delphi Ardu 4? Delphi Ardu 4 is an M class planet, a barren rocky world with little to no vegetation and frequent ion storms. The giant crystals that grow there absorb energy, but it is not understood how they do so. The entire Delphi Ardu system, consisting of 11 planets, was considered completely uninhabited until the encounter with Portal 63. Frequent ion storms? That can't just be a coincidence. The Elidians should have crushed the revolt. But if the Hotari have Takan technology and can control it, see why they're willing to negotiate peace. For all we know, this could be just the beginning. And we're up against something greater than we can imagine. This kind of power in Hotari hands, it could be dangerous for everyone. Agreed. Which is why we should find a way to neutralize it if we can. If it helps. We've been able to triangulate the source of the ionic interference and warp disruption to a specific mine on town. Engineering used the latest data from your shuttle to pinpoint its origin. There. So we know where to look. <sighs> we need to know what's down there. What the Hotari are hiding. Better understand what we're up against. And to neutralize it if we can. Captain, embarking on a mission to the Hotari moon would not be viewed favorably by either side. However, given the circumstances, we are entirely within our rights to defend ourselves. I just want to make sure this doesn't blow up in our faces. That's why I think of sending Commander Rydek on a covert mission to Tau. Assuming you're up to the task. It would require absolute secrecy. And obviously, it's not without risk. I'll get the away team in and out. They're in safe hands with me. Under normal circumstances, that would be the case. Given the sensitive nature of this incursion, I'm afraid you'll have to go it alone. I'm hoping Tylus can accompany you. The priority is to avoid detection. It's a calculated risk. The last thing we need is to get caught and then blamed for violating our neutrality, aggravating an already tense situation. We can't afford any mistakes. Which is why I've chosen you. Dallas will be essential to my success. Not only her knowledge of the mines, but her ability to gain access. Particularly now that we know which mine we need to get into. Make sure she understands the need to keep this covert. She's not going to want her people to know about this. Get in touch with Tylus and make the necessary arrangements as discreetly as possible. Bridge to Captain Solano. The Olydians have moved additional ships to the edge of the Hotari system. Current heading is straight for the homeworld. Understood. It would seem we no longer have the luxury of waiting. In that case, may I suggest you and I return to Hotari Prime? Doing so will provide Commander Rydek as much time as possible to complete her mission. Agreed. We'll hail the Queen's delegation from my ready room. We all know what we need to do. Dismissed. Petty Officers Diaz and Ed Salar, where is the crystal formation that you found in the shuttle? I have tasked Ensign Calloway with performing a full analysis of the tetrametric pulses. Security brought it to the containment lab. I was just there. They don't know anything about it. Security never checked it in. Miranda never got there? She's the one that had the crystal formation? Yeah. Her and the rest of the security detail from the negotiation. Diaz, Tamaris. Wonder she's in the tail under control. Again. Commander Westbrook to Petty Officer Miranda Maris. Respond. Something's not right. She's still on the ship. She has to be. Computer, locate Petty Officer Miranda Maris. 
Petty Officer Miranda Maris is in the isolinear storage array on Deck 5. I'll go find her. Good. I am sure Mr. Diaz can attend to this on his own. Yeah, I've got to see. She's under telephone mind control. There's some chips on the floor. Someone improperly pulled these isolinear chips. It's just you. I'm busy right now. Why don't you come back later? What's the matter? Were you worried it was gonna be someone else? No. I mean, I'm glad it's you. Transfer complete. But I'm through here. So I can't stay in chat. I have other things to do. Sorry you came all this way for nothing. What exactly were you doing in here? I saw you accessing files. Copying them onto that. This is... secure data. It's really not my place to talk about it. Look, I appreciate that you came to check on me, but I'm fine. You worry too much. We're on a starship. Nothing's gonna happen to me here. I'm worried because you're acting strange. I don't know what it is you're really doing in here, but Commander Westbrook said the crystals you took never made it to the containment lab. Will you drop it? I don't like being interrogated, Carter. Hey, wait up! Look at your section 31. I'm getting some very mixed signals from you right now. Sorry, I'm under a lot of stress right now. Just tell Chovak or whoever I don't know where the crystals are and let me go about my business. I know we have some things to figure out. I don't have time to stand around and debate with you. I don't know what it is, but you're hiding something. What's in that storage drive? I told you, it's secure data, so drop it. Miranda, hold on! No. Get out of my way! So I see you found. 
found each other. You were taking so long, the commander sent us to see what the problem was. Diaz, you were sent here with specific orders, and fighting your crewmate wasn't one of them. What the hell is going on here? Let's just let them explain. I'd like to hear that, because I know what it looks like. There's something seriously wrong with her. She's not herself, I'm telling you. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. Well, for one, she was copying data onto this. This drive is unauthorized. There are ISOs all over the floor. And that's why I was in here, investigating this situation. And when Carter came looking for me, we got our wires crossed. It wasn't anything more than that. Look, I wish I was wrong about this. That I was overreacting. More than anything. But I know what I saw. And it's not what she's saying. <laughs> I can't believe this. I don't know what's going on here. But I think we need to call it into security. She can explain herself in the brig. Hold on a minute. We don't need to put this on anyone's permanent record. Carter said you're not yourself. If something's wrong with you, we should head to sick bay and the doc will fix you right up. Yeah, I... I haven't felt right since I came back from Hotari. I think I should see the doctor. You two know her? If you really think she's not well, we can take her to sick bay first. But what I know is this is a security breach, and we should treat it as such. Please, just... Let me go see the doctor. She did have a bumpy ride back on the shuttle. Come on, Carter. We should get her taken care of. You better be sure about Don't this. Don't make mistakes, up. Let's take her to sick bay. It's better than the brig, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Fine. Get checked out by medical. You two go with her. I'll put this back together. Interesting. Foliage on Tau resembles underwater plant life on Earth. The universe is full of mysteries. Rydek here. This is Zermont. Any trouble getting to the surface? I'm really starting to miss transporters. As long as this storm is around, you'd better learn to like shuttles. But if you can find the cause of the interference, we might be able to get back to transporting. As if I needed another incentive. We both know there's a lot more than that riding on this. Fair enough. You'll need to get in and out of the mine undetected, so I hope Minister Tylus can help in that regard. So do I. And to keep this covert, we'll refrain from contact unless absolutely necessary. Understood. Rydek out. Did I just see Sam pop up there? No, no, no. no. Troll crouch. Oh, I did see Sam pop up. The ionic interference is coming from underground. I should find a safer way down there. Well, we are going downhill. It's always better than going uphill.
saw your shuttle take off. Hopefully no one else did. <laughs> it's good to see you. Even under these unfortunate circumstances. Thank you for agreeing to this. You've already taken risks on our behalf. It means a great deal that you would do so again. If it's for my people, no risk is too great. Lead the way. I'll fill you in on what we've learned about the situation. Follow me. The device Galvin and Sidron brought back from the mines is being used to control some sort of warp disruption weapon that has the Resolute trapped in Hotari space. According to our readings, the power source for that device is on this moon, at the specific coordinates I sent you. That sounds impossible. That explains the rumors of the Hotari controlling the Ionic Storm. We strongly suspect the device was created by an ancient empire known as the Takan. The Takan? Once the most powerful civilization in the galaxy. But they've been gone for over 600,000 years. It's hard to believe there's something like that on Tau. Which is why I need proof. If we find hard evidence that Galvin and his allies are hiding dangerous Takan technology, I can convince the Federation to let us intervene. Understood. We're almost there. <coughs> <coughs> This feels so much like a next generation episode. <laughs> well, that's the mine. Prospect six fourteen north, subdivision twenty. It's enormous. Just one of the thousands across town. The pride of Hotari. How do we get inside? The structure that circles the mine has entry points for transporting equipment into the lower levels. They're guarded, but nothing I can't get past using my authority. Well, that's good to hear. As long as you can avoid being seen, I should be able to talk my way past any miner. And provide a little distraction for you in the process. How do I avoid being seen? You don't use the door. Decent logic. How dare you! Don't you know who I am? I... I am Tylus Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs. That's not... The Queen would be furious to hear you try to deny me entry. The Queen? But I just... You just... Just what? Just now realize the trouble you've made for yourself? Who exactly do you think you're going to report this to? Because I'll be reporting this as well. There's something much further to go back. You have no authority here. Do you understand who pays your wage? I can inform the Queen directly of this instance. You should no You'll regret everything for second to you. You should have opened the doors the second I appeared before you. That's not the protocol. I didn't go Each second somewhere. you delay my entry, we will be What was supposed to scan?
we're missing here? What anomaly slot to detect? Oh, there it is. Pressing two holes to it, and nine's happening. Full oh. system access. Let's see if I can just and go. The power of the tricorder. Gotta love it. Better hurry. Not sure how long she can keep him busy. I'm guessing I'm going this way. Beep. Ah. Something in here is keeping that door closed. Got it. Should remove the security check on the door. Right, what did, what did I just... I'm confused. <laughs> What am I supposed to do here? If you want me to do something, be a bit more clear about it. Try card is beeping, but why? <laughs> There's some back here that they do. this purple line oh <laughs> is my screen not working again yeah back up monitor Could be the power supply with mono, I need to change that. I'll have a look at the monitor later on. 
tonight. I just don't get why I've got to turn the monitor off and on when the loading scene comes up. I didn't come here to educate an imbecile on royal protocol. Of course not, Minister. So I will be about my business here, and you will take yourself out of my sight. There you are. You really let that guy have it. It worked, didn't it? I'm used to having to throw my weight around. Hard to get anyone to listen to you otherwise. I'm impressed. I didn't know you had it in you. There's a lot you don't know about me. Underestimate me at your peril. <laughs> the catwalks were booby trapped. That sounded like a plot. Calvin and Sidron have gone to the without being invited. Well, we're inside. Where do you want to start? The ionic interference is coming from below us. We need to go deeper. That lift goes down, at least at the changeover station. But we can't use it without DNA authorization from one of the guards. I have an idea, but we need a few samples of DNA from the miners who work here. Samples? Fingerprints, sweat, blood. Which will trick the machine and get us control of the lift. That's the theory. Let's test it. Okay, okay. So we're getting... Look, unless this console thinks I'm a Hotari guard, it won't work. The guards work out of that building back there. Might have some DNA. Do you think we could just find a way to climb over this? Possibly. But the console on the lift itself is locked by the same system that locks this ramp. No shortcuts then. I'm sure you can figure something out. There's DNA on this console, but it's only partial. I can't use this. Maybe because we're outside. The weather out here could dilute any DNA samples. What about inside that structure? That's where the workers spend most of their time. Good idea. Well, we're heading that way anyway, so why not? Why not, I say? Why not? Yeah, I heard you, Tricorder. Wow. That is a lot of DNA. I should look for the most concentrated spots. Ah, there's someone here. I can use this. a stable DNA sample. It's only partial, but a few more should do it. It's a green fan. Not concentrated enough. I should try somewhere else. stable DNA here. Good. That's another I could use. Just need one more sample. Didn't this split off in a different direction in here, was it? Just post the last second so we can see where I'm going. One more sample to see. One more. I guess it's well hidden. Yeah. 
Where is it? Out of range, what the hell is that? It's not here. Ah, there's another room, I can see it. Not enough. Gotta keep looking. This'll work. Perfect. That's enough to make the DNA profile. Time to go back to the lift. Back to the lift we go. Oh, you can talk to the lady. You're not coming inside? There are some things I'd rather not smell. How is she standing? Well, okay. She can defy gravity. She's super girl. Following here. What's in all these containers? These contain mining supplies, tools, energy packs for machinery. Shouldn't mining supplies be inside the mines? It is troubling. If the workers here aren't mining, then what are they doing? I hope the cameras are picking up my uh, stomach rumble. Theory proven. I'll get it started. Ready? Oh, this one has done it again. Survived worse than this. Well, I haven't. But I'll put my faith in you. For now. Jara. Stay back. Guard at the station. You'll have to hide. Who are you? What are you doing here? You watch your tone with me. I'm Tylus Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs. I speak for the Queen herself. This is a restricted area. No one gains access without the approval of Galvin or Sidron. Wait. Jewess Gawad Aboencha. <laughs> Let me go. Are you all right? I don't know. Are you injured? No, I, I just... I thought if I could talk my way through like always, I'd be fine, but... I, I, I'm a diplomat. This isn't what I do. I've never even fired a weapon. This is just... It's real now. I wasn't ready for this. Tylus, you can do this. I don't see what you're basing that on. All you've shown me so far is an iron-willed determination to save your people. I don't expect that's changed. No. No, it hasn't. My authority has never been challenged like that. It meant nothing to him. So we should assume any Hatari we encounter from here on can't be reasoned with. Agreed. The only loyalty they have down here is to Galvin and Sidron. Can you switch over the lift? Guard should have a scan card that will allow us to operate the switch. So let's look at the helmet first, or mask, whatever this is. That's some serious armor. Conditions in the mines are harsh, even for Hotari. An Elidian disruptor. 
I assume the miners took weapons from the Illidians before they fled the mines. That explains some of how the uprising happened, but not enough. Should we take it with us? No. My phaser is more efficient. Unless you want it. Oh, oh, oh no. Weapons aren't uh, my thing. <laughs> Got it. He's not dead, is he? He's still one of my people, and I didn't come here to take Otari lives. My phaser's set to stun. He'll be perfectly fine, just unconscious for a while. I see. We don't have that sort of technology on our weapons. Good to know. Energy readings are emanating from this tunnel. It's sure to be guarded in there. Stay low and follow my lead. Is that all dilithium? Not all of it. We excavate large chunks of rock that contain varying amounts of dilithium ore. It's sorted and processed at the collector ship above. Looks like they've improvised a barrier. Yes, we must be getting closer. We need that particular card, don't we? I'm afraid so. We don't have time to wait for them to finish whatever they're doing. We'll have to try to keep low and sneak past them. I'm starting to see the utility of a phaser. I wouldn't stand a chance against all three of them. What am I supposed to look at here? Can I zoom out so I can keep it out? Oh. Can you open that door? Not without that scan card. I don't like our options here. I have to get us that card so we can open the door. How? If they detect you, Galvin and Sidron's followers are clearly willing to kill to protect whatever is in this mine. Hey, I'm trained for this. Spawn up! be fine. What should I do? Avoid being seen. Stick to the edge of the room and meet me at the door. During the stealth sequences, there are enemies that if alerted will hunt for you and try to catch you. If you're caught, your mission has failed. Enemies can see you if they are looking in your direction. Stay crouched with control to avoid their line of sight. If you use shift to sneak faster while crouched. If an enemy sees you, this mark will appear. Close up all the way, you will be caught. Get your sight quickly to lose their attention. 
Enemies will take predictable paths, watch them and learn their patrol patterns if they know. Time to move forward safely. Certain locations there will be interaction points that distract the guards. Use these to draw the guards to that location. This may open up a path that they were guarding. Okay. See this guy moves. What? Ah, bah. We try and stun him. Avoid being seen. Stick to the edge of the room and meet me at the door. I'm not very good at stealth games. Yes, I know! Wait till he moves again. Can't go this way. What? An intruder. How long is Delvin going to make us wait? I'd I'm melt if I went through there. He's let us well so far. Moving. It's a miracle. Once. <laughs> so, one are going to work with things, or are going to go back to being black? I think it's going back to being black, isn't it? Yep. Stay close. What this is about. It's weird I've got to turn on my monitor off and on to get to work. Stop! What? Motion sensors. <laughs> They'll trigger an alarm. We'll be found. Invisible to the naked eye. They could be anywhere. How will we get through? Tricorder, I'm guessing.
just to avoid. I'm guessing they've got to crouch. Where am I going anyway? That was easy. Dead way, dead alien guy. I've got the name of the species. A lot of dead alien guys. This it's where the uprising started. Don't do this. We defend ourselves, but we don't kill on this scale, this level of savagery. There's no such thing as a bloodless rebellion. I, I don't know if we should keep going. So much death. We'll make sure they didn't die for nothing. What we learned here could save the rest of your people. Okay. Whatever happened here, it made the Illidians abandon the mines. Let's find out what they're so scared of. And this is where I'll stop for now. I will be back on playing again later on tonight. So those that watch this on YouTube, look at part three. I don't know what we called yet, but it will appear probably. This part will be uploaded on YouTube Saturday. So probably Sunday. Part. And then the next part on the following Wednesday, because Mass Effect uploads on Tuesday, Thursday, Red Dead on Mondays and Fridays. So, until then guys, I will talk to you later.